Hi hey, crafty friends, how's everyone doing today? I'm working on a little this little journal today that we worked on the cover together, one of my little junky junk journals. And we did the outside cover together and now I need to cover the inside. So I've saved a few uh, things from the trash since uh, my last video where I showed you my junky junk. So uh, here's a few things. I'll just show you really quickly. Just is a little order form a CD envelope, a packaging, junk mail, a book page, lots of junk mail here, Jimmy John's wrapper, an envelope from photos, and I'm sure there's more, but um, this is brown paper that was, you know, used for a box to, you know, uh, it was all wadded up and I <laughs> straightened it out as much as I could. Now I could iron it, but I've never done that, uh, so, you know, one day maybe I will, but I've never done that so far. But I'm thinking that out of everything in my, in my basket here, my junk basket, I kind of would like to use this. I think it would be perfect for this since this has mushrooms, these pretty mushrooms on the front. I thought this would be like a natural look for the inside of this. And then I also, do I have anything else? I'm just looking real quick. And the, the color also, I want this this to have a more, you know, maybe a little bit of this color in here. There's some green here, but kind of like natural colors. So I thought this paper might be perfect. So um, let me open it up, let's see. So, okay, so I have this end here. Uh, and yeah, you can see this is how it was. I didn't cut anything off. I just took it out of the packaging and um, flattened it out as much as I could and folded it up so I could put it in my basket. Let me put my basket behind me now, out of the way, and uh, measure a piece of this to go on the inside. And I think I'm just going to leave it in its kind of wrinkled state. I think that could be really cool and kind of a natural, a very natural look. So, and it could um, lend to some, for me or whoever eventually may get this journal, on a uh, fun texture. So I'm going to, I just want to cut this a jagged end off here so I can, you know, get a nice uh, square piece or even piece for... I'll save this. I'll put that back in my junky junk, junky junk journal basket. <laughs> so, let's see. So, let me turn it this way. And I can probably just put a piece like right here like that. And uh, this is already thick, the book pages that I used here. So, let's see. Um, and I have some closures here too that I think I'll use. Uh, just some scraps from a tassel I had made. I had made a tassel and I made too many fabric strips. So I have a bag here that I pulled out. Uh, let me cut that piece off or a piece off to use for the inside of this. I've got a little jacket part here that I want to go through. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Let me measure this way. <laughs> okay, that would be plenty. I'll cut off the extra. So about, let me just do a little extra there. Okay, so like about right there. There we go. Okay. I have pieces of that that I've saved before and I put them with my shipping supplies so that I could use them if I need them for uh, shipping and order. But this piece I decided to put in here. So I'm gonna put some fabric tack down Go ahead and glue this down. I've already got my uh, closure. Okay, make sure it's upright when you do when you do pockets and things, pages. <laughs> right now, it doesn't matter so much because this is uh, not uh, any kind of directional paper that we're putting in here. But I still kind of like to know that I'm doing things in the upright position. <laughs> it helps in the long run. Uh, just getting things put in the journal. Okay, so let me get some glue right along. Now I'm going to sew around this, but I still want this glue nice and flat. Like if, um, not necessarily, well I don't want it, you know, like it is wrinkled paper. So, you know, it's going to be wrinkled paper, but I 
don't want really any bubbles if I can help it. So I'm just going to put this right down on here and we're going to cut off the, the extra. So let me just flatten this out really nice. And my table is going to shake a little bit when I'm doing this because I'm uh, at a table in the middle of my craft room. And if you see my videos showing my craft room, it's that table right in the middle. And it's on wheels, so when I move around here on my craft table, it does move or just shake a little bit. It's a nice sturdy table, but, you know, it does shake a little bit. Because it's, I don't know, it does. <laughs> okay. So, I think that's pretty good. Let me fold this and see how that looks. My son's dog is here. If you hear a dog barking outside, my son's dog, little dog is here. The uh, They have a little, a little dog that uh, likes to bark when it goes outside. <laughs> At whatever, anything, the wind. <laughs> It just likes to bark. It's quiet when it's inside, but it's a little girl. So, yeah. She's sweet. She's full of pep and energy. She's a puppy. She's Is she a year old? I don't think she's even a year old yet. Yeah, so. Anyway, she's outside right now, barking her little head off. <laughs> so I'm going to be sewing around the edges. So let's see, these two pieces I'll save, but these two pieces are going in the trash. Now, so I need pockets, and uh, I would like pockets. That would be like a decoration also here on the inside and some in the closure. So here's the, here's the pieces I picked out for the closure from my previous tassel that I put. I made way too many uh, strands for this tassel. And uh, I don't know if I was going to make more than one or what, but I have this whole bag of strips of fabric. And so I think these will be nice. They're kind of, you know, black is neutral. So I think I can glue. I'll sew, when I sew around, I'll be sewing these down. So here and here. But first I want to figure out what I want to do for my pockets. And like I said, natural. Here's some green. We could use green. We could use, see I've got another green um, scrap of paper here that was from these are from my scrap box this was cut out fussy cut from a magazine this is just another piece of fabric there now we've got our paper on the inside so uh, something with color here would be good and I don't know if I have anything in my let me look first in here and then we'll go to my paper scrap box so I'm going to try to show you a little bit what I'm looking at here. Um, I've got a brown paper, another, uh, I've got a, let's see, oh, I guess I had two of these. Oh, I used one side and I have the other side, but then, you know, like I said, I want something with color, maybe in the orangey or red uh, family of colors. So I'm not seeing, see, there's purple, there's floral, but not, you know, they're, they're too big. The, this is nice, but uh, let me see what this is here. This menu could be good. This is the right colors. We could do that. Anything else? Uh, that's nice and strong, too, that paper. So, got a McDonald box in here. McDonald's and other junk mail. But... I think this might be perfect because of the color. Let me just make sure. Here's some red, something red here, a junk mail. It's not as thick. Uh, here's a uh, piece of junk. Oh, this is an envelope, but not... I mean, that would be good, but uh, I like this color. The colors here better. They're more like the mushroom colors. So let's do that. Let's do this. Cut this down to uh, be an envelope. Uh, let's do this. Let's see, it opens up like this. Oh, hmm. do I want this side or this side? I kind of like this side with the words, and these colors are good too. This side has, this end has a deeper yellow down here. So maybe I'll do that. So let's see how far up we want it. Uh, let's see, this, 
Is that about the right height? Or it actually is about the right height right there where that fold is. Um, but, cause, because right above that would be where I would want to put the closures, these little fabric pieces. So let me cut this apart real quick. I've used this menu quite a bit already. I've used a piece of it already, probably for a page or something. And so this menu has really gone a long way. <laughs> I don't even know where I got it. I mean, I know where it came from, but I don't remember being there. So, oh, here's what I'm picturing. Something like this. So I can just cut this. Measure like this and then cut. Let me, um, I want to make sure I cut it right. So let me just do this. I'm going to lay this down and cut right. I moved it a little bit. Cut about right there. Right beside these words right here. There's some words right there. And then my, then my little mark. And then I can cut a straight line. Let's see how we did about that little piece that could be a, involved in a cluster or something. So I'll save that. All right, and now some glue. And see, when we decorate this, I really uh, like just adding pretty things. And then it's like, it's like you don't even know that it's junk mail and junky junk type stuff that you used in the journal because you add pretty things and then there you go. You've used some things and recycled and repurposed and you've made junk pretty. So <laughs> it's really fun. Let's see, this can come over a little bit there on the edge, right down to the bottom and then right to that edge. I'm going to get it in that crease right there. Make sure everything is good. Let it dry. And then I'll be sewing it, like I said. And then this tie closure, I think that'll be plenty long enough. We'll go, I'll have the front, this is the front, this is the back. I'll have the front facing out. Everything is right side up. There's my front, there's my pocket. And then just above the pockets, I'll put a little glue for these tie closures and keep them, hold them down while I am sewing. I'll let this dry for a minute or two or three <laughs> before I sew on it so that I'm not, you know, hurting my sewing machine, I'm globbing up my sewing machine with glue. A string here I need to pull off. Okay, so there's my little ties, tie closures. Uh, plenty long enough, as you can see. And I think they look nice with the whole scheme of things here. So I happen to have some black thread in my sewing machine right now. So I'm going to go sew around this. I'll wait a few minutes for that to dry and then sew around that, and I'll be right back. Okay, we have this sewn together. There's the inside with that paper, packaging paper, the menu pocket, the uh, fabric closures, all sewn around. I did zigzag stitching all the way around. I will go back and forth probably like three times there by the closures to make that nice and sturdy. They're glued on, but they're also sewn, you know, back and forth several times for sturdiness. So now I need to pick out, uh, what I do for these is put in 10 papers. That's plenty for a little journal like that. If you put in more, it's just gonna be too much <laughs> because by the time you put in pockets, your ephemera, duck spots, it's um, stuffed and then also whoever gets it can put in their stuff and it's just gonna be a stuffed little journal and so we're going to pull out 10 papers together and then I'm going to cut them and uh, 
see how they look. So we've got one here. I want to use this because it's the right colors. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm trying not to be too picky because I have quite a bit now in here and I'm going to start from the bottom. <laughs> see what I got here. So we've got one. I'm going to try to find smaller pieces that will, like here's the journal. And so like, see how this is the right height. So some stuff like that around the right, that's around the right size. And then I'll save the bigger pieces for bigger journals, right? So we've got an envelope here. That's a good size. So that could be cut up. I do want to, you know, use different sizes, but a lot of them I want to be the full length. So not too many small pieces. Let's see now, here is something that is, well, that's quite big. Sorry, I'll show you when I pull it out. I just can't get all this in the camera at the same time. Uh, this could be good. Uh, let's see, these are from the same junk mail. Let me see what this is. Let's do this one. This is a single piece of paper. That could be perfect. Uh, let's see, that's all from that same junk mail. I just want to, don't want to use all the same, like, advertisement type thing uh, in here. Just something from a different, different junk mail piece. Uh, here's something. What is this? This looks like handwriting on here, but it is junk mail. That is That came in the mail. It's an advertisement for a leaf filter. <laughs> so we've got one, two, three, four. Let's try to find something with a different texture. So four. Let's see. Oh, what's this? There's something with more handwriting on it. Isn't that interesting? Uh, five. It's a big piece of paper, but I think this could be interesting. This is all just like like somebody drew on here and wrote on here, but it's all just junk mail. How this is how it came. So that's kind of funny. But anyway, five. Uh, let me skip over. See, they're all. Oh, well, here's. Well, no, no, that's too. Let's see. I'm trying to kind of stay, but if it has some red in it. That's okay, but kind of trying to stay in that color palette. Let's see. This is an order form. I want to keep this together because it has an envelope in it, so I think that would be a good page in a bigger journal. Oh, here's something. Let's see what this is. This is just the end page from a book, but it's a, it's just a good color. So that would be what, six. I'm losing count. This is a piece of file folder. Uh, let's see. This is a giant calendar here. Here's another piece of uh, brown folder. So uh, let's see if I can use some of that. Okay, let me see where I am here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, let's cut off a piece of this. Eight. Um, eight, eight, eight. Let's look through here and see if there's anything we want to use. So I'm going to say nine. That's my cat little mini calendar. And oh, I need to show you something. I forgot that I've been doing something with. I'll get it when I pause to cut these pages down and then show you. Uh, oh, here's a piece of, here's some pieces of paper that I put down to protect uh, my space I was painting on, and they have paint on them. So let's pick out, let's pick out this yellow one with yellow on it, yellow paint. The other one had green, but I don't have any yellow in here yet, so that would be, except for this brown envelope's kind of yellowish. And uh, anything else? Kind of looking through this whole over here. Shall we put another piece of this brown inside as a page? Probably. So I think that's enough. So I showed you the pages, the paper I pulled out for pages. I'm going to pause, cut these down, and then come back and show you what they look like. I'll be back. Okay, that was fun. So I have the pages cut. I've got 11 pages. I couldn't 
gonna narrow it down to 10. So I have one more page. I'm breaking my own rule here. But uh, here they are. Let me show you um, kind of what order they're in. And so I kind of stayed with what I said. Neutrals with some color from the cover. You know, the mushrooms and the greens and things. So I've got this butterfly in the middle. That's from the little mini calendar. And then this uh, end page from a book. And this is that mail with the writing on it. And I left it so it folds out like that. Okay, so I didn't you know cut them all down to so that one folded out to the side now I have a piece of the brown paper packaging and it folds out on this side the other side and then this envelope I just cut the envelope apart so the cut the front from the back and this is the front with the window and in, in, in it so that's there this was a piece of the brown envelope also see I already had one right no this is the first one I'm showing you so this one had the flap on it, so I thought that would be a cool pocket. So I left it and just cut it like that. So that'll be when it's folded in half, you'll have two pockets there. And I'll cover up this writing on the back with something. And then, uh, let's see, this right here is the next page with, uh, you know, just the advertisement that came in the mail, AT&T. <laughs> so another piece of that, because I liked it so much and I did instead of cutting the edges I tore the edges on this book page so I think that was really cool and then a piece of that menu and another piece of the brown envelope uh, I can cover up that or it doesn't really matter and then this is a, a gift bag here and it was red and white gingham so I thought that would look give it some color and go with the colors of this journal so let's see where are they so now I'm going to fold these in half and you know, I'll have my signature. So there's one. Let's fold them all in half. And then I will sew them in. And then we will have our cover done and our pages done. So let's just see what they look like folded in half real quick. This is kind of like, I mean, the whole process is my favorite part, but <laughs> when you get them in there, when you get them sewn in, I just like to, they just take on a whole, uh, different you know because they're not just paper they're now book pages journal pages and it just takes on a whole new uh, meaning and, and look and everything it's just really cool to see I think I want this one like this and that see here's how the uh, little window will be I thought it would be interesting here's how it is on this side so it would be like this be interesting that what that piece of brown envelope with the with the um, with the flap okay and that's there I'm just gonna put that there for a second and then this here okay and then that's AT&T that end page So I have like a writing page, like more of a blank page in between each page with like a pattern or a print on it or something. So that was uh, done on purpose. <laughs> See, now I have a plain page now. And of course some of the pages like this gift bag has its pattern on one side and plain on the other. So there's plenty of room to be able to someone to get this little journal and just have some fun with it writing in it or and of course you can always make a writing spot on a printed page by adding something on top of there and so there we go there's our 11 papers which now is 22 pages and if you count front and back you've got 44 surfaces in this little journal it's going to be sewn right into here let's see do they stick out at all I'm going to need to trim them a little bit, a couple of them I see, but I'll get them trimmed and I'll sew it in and I'll be right back and we'll see how she looks. Just one second. Okay, so um, I have those folded and put in there and I cut them down, you know, to make sure I just cut a few strips off to make sure, literally slivers to make sure they weren't sticking out here and now I'm going to go ahead and sew them in so you can watch that if you like. It's just going to be a three pamphlet stitch. 
I'm just turning around to grab some paper clips. <laughs> so yeah, we got them all in there. Everything is upright, so that's all good. And I think it's going to be so cute. So let's do this. Oh, I hope, you know, I never even said I hope you're having a good day. I just dove right into working on this journal. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to get going because I don't have a lot of time, you know, and don't want to waste my time or your time. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm going to poke three holes, uh, one in the middle, and I just always just eyeball this. So, uh, you know, I'm going to say, okay, the middle's right there. And if you're new to junk journaling, this is a super easy little pamphlet stitch. They call it the three pamphlet stitch for a little journal like this. That's all you need. So about an inch from the bottom, that'll catch everything too. So about right there would be good. So another, and I try to poke it right through and make it come right out the um, edge here. So it's not like going off to the side or anything, you know what I mean? I kind of turn it around and make sure the hole, because this is a real thin awl and that's what I like for me. Uh, just a thin little hole. Okay, another inch from the top. Again, just eyeballing and poking through and just trying to make sure it's going straight through on the on the fold here. So this is one of the easiest uh, if you want to try. If you've never done a sewing in a signature, uh, just make a... It can be any size you want. Well, not any size. Make it small enough so you don't need more than three. <laughs> three uh, whole pamphlet stitch but it can be bigger than this and still use a three pamphlet stitch but um you know don't put too many pages in it like i have 11 here i probably should have done 10 but i just loved all the pages i put in here so i put them in it won't hurt anything and um you know try it with just a 10 or 11 pages like this and you'll see and it'll help you if you're new to learn and see that it's not too hard you know to do a little one signature like this. So this is my favorite needle. These particular needles I got at Walmart a long time ago. I have more of them, but this one is the, my favorite. And it was a little package of needles at Walmart called doll needles. And the reason I bought them is because, well, you can see they're nice and long and I like the end to be sharp and because it's because it doesn't make my hole any bigger. And, um, you know, I don't know. It just goes through nice, I think. And then uh, this end has a nice uh, big eye so that usually like a lot of my threads will go through there without me um, uh, actually using my needle threader. Let me count. Let me do this real quick. I forgot to do this real quick is measure my thread. So I do three lengths. One, two. I do that before I put my needle on. I don't know what I was. I'm just talking and not thinking. But uh Three lengths is usually plenty, and you can leave more if you want, and you can use less if you want, but I like to use at least three so that I can make sure I have enough to tie off the ends and everything like that. So then I just go through the middle one, and you'll see if you've never done this before and you try it for the first time that, uh, you know, it's not too hard to get through this many pages. It's not hard really at all, but you know, if it is, you can use things like uh, little jewelry pliers if you have those to help you pull the needle through if your hands are weak or maybe you have arthritis or something. Um, and if I've had thicker pages, sometimes I you know, like more pages, I will use my little jewelry pliers to help me pull the needle through. So I've got that one through there. Now I'm going back down through the middle again. And the, here I don't want to split my, split my, uh, this is embroidery floss. So no matter what thread you use, wax cord or whatever, you don't want to split it. So you just kind of make sure as you're going through, try to make sure you haven't split that because it makes it kind of, um, makes it look weird and then it doesn't, uh, tie off right and make and doesn't the uh, thread won't be tight enough really to um, be tight on your signature okay now here I can see the last hole here let's see if our needle goes through sometimes as you're like sewing it's almost like you're 
your hole is closing up but this is going through okay but you can always just poke your your um and i have this in my amazon list underneath in my description box this uh particular type of awl if you're looking for one I used to use a bigger one when I first started and uh, I thought the holes were too big so that's why I looked for that one. I saw someone else on YouTube using it I was like that's what I need and that's what I've used ever since. <laughs> so, um, And I picked this embroidery floss because it matches. It's like a little kind of mossy green, pretty green type of natural green um, embroidery floss. And this is my little scrap bag of embroidery floss. I have a brand new bag there that I got from one of the companies that I demonstrate for but I if I if there's a color in here I can use I use it from here first because I need to use that up that's my scrap bag of embroidery floss so so then you saw I just um, I think you saw what I did there if you didn't just rewind and and replay there but uh, put a knot in the end put a couple of knots when you're done I usually put at least two I don't want to make it too bulky but nice and tight it's nice and tight everything's tight here and everything's tight here on embroidery floss or if you use any kind of uh, like baker's twine something that has more than one thread in it involved in it I will tie off a knot on the end so it doesn't come unraveled I do that with yarn too like in tassels and things so just tie a little knot in the end and it keeps it from coming unraveled of course you can put little charms or whatever on it too or um, sometimes you can even just put two little pieces of paper on the end glued together like little hearts or something I've done that little butterflies so that is it it is done as far as the pages and uh, the cover we did all that today I'm going to do a little light decorating and add some ephemera and then I'll come back with with the um, flip through but here's our pocket Let's just do a little flip through here real quick to see, you know, what I was talking about when I said it takes on a whole new, um, like, look when you actually get the pages and we made, you know, everything from junk mail and stuff. But look how, look how it looks now as, as pages. You would never really look at this and say, oh, that's junky. You know what I mean? <laughs> so let's just look at what we have again and how it looks in here. So the gift bag the uh, brown envelope, the menu, the end page from the book, this is a junk mail, this is a um, the brown envelope with the flap and I'm going to glue this down right here. I'll put some glue there so that will be a pocket. Junk mail, the envelope with the, with the window, our flip, flip out there. It's like a double flip out. And junk mail here. That one piece that had the writing on it, the end page, and the calendar, the little mini calendar. So, and then that's the same thing in the back here. So, anyway, I think it's super cute and fun. And we'll come back on. I'll have uh, it decorated and full of ephemera, and it, then it will be in my shop. Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed that process, and I'll see you in my next video. Have a great day.